Hello everybody and welcome back to the Galaxy Server Administration course. My name is Simon Gladman and I am one of the Galaxy Administrators of Galaxy Australia and I work at the University of Melbourne in Victoria in Australia. In this session we're going to be going through monitoring Galaxy using Telegraph, Influx and Grafana. To start off today we are starting at training.galaxyproject.org and you'll see this website. We're going to go to Galaxy Server Administration. And then if we scroll down, we can see here Galaxy Monitoring with Telegraph and Grafana. And we're going to click on the hands-on tutorial here. Um, hopefully everybody has already watched the slideshow. Um, if not, I suggest you do that first. Okay, so just a bit of an overview of this tutorial. Um, some of the things we hope to be able to teach you um, is how to monitor Galaxy with Telegraph and how to set up InfluxDB, um, how you can make graphs in Grafana, and importantly, how you can be alerted on important metrics in Galaxy. For example, you may want to know when your Galaxy server is, is doing something or is broken, and Grafana can help alert you with these kind of things. Some of the objectives. For this tutorial, are we going to set up InfluxDB, we're going to set up Telegraph, we're going to set up Grafana, and we're going to create some charts in Grafana so we can monitor what's going on inside Galaxy. Some of the requirements that we hope you have completed already. Um, we hope you've, you understand what Ansible is because we're going to be making extensive use of Ansible again. Um, hopefully you've uh, completed the uh, Galaxy installation with Ansible. Um, if you've already completed the Galaxy monitoring with GX Admin, that's good. If you haven't yet, that doesn't matter. Um, I'll be going through how to install GX Admin um, in this tutorial as well. But if you um, have already done it, feel free to skip that part. This tutorial will take around about two hours to complete. And as I said before, there are some supporting slides that go with this. Okay, bit of an overview. So. As a Galaxy administrator on a large Galaxy server, I am very interested in monitoring what happens inside Galaxy. Um, it's, it's my job to keep the Galaxy server running. And so I have to understand how many jobs I'm processing, how many users I've got, if there's any problems with the, um, the web server, if there's any problems with any of the other parts of Galaxy. So, and then be notified of those problems so I can go and fix it. And because uh, my Galaxy server is funded using um, public money, I also have to report on the use of my Galaxy server to the funding bodies. And so Grafana and GX Admin and Telegraph all help me do those kind of things. Okay, a bit about data flow. Every computer that I use or every virtual machine that I use as part of my Galaxy server, be it the web server or the database server or any of my um, um, storage controllers or my worker nodes, they all report data back to my monitoring database. And so on each of my nodes, I run a data collector called Telegraph and sends it all to a central collecting point, which runs a, a time series database, a specialist time series database called InfluxDB. And all of the data gets put into that. And then I use Grafana to provide a, a visual interface um, to that data and I can query the data from Grafana and make all these really nice charts. So a bit of a thing about InfluxDB. So this is the database that I use to collect all of my data that's coming off Telegraph. Um, it's a time series database and it's been designed specifically for storing time series data like monitoring and metrics. So everything that goes into this database has a timestamp associated with it. Um, and that's really cool because it means we can set retention policies. Like we can say, um, easily say, keep this data for two weeks or keep this data for a month and then don't worry about this series. But for this series or for this feature, I'd really like to keep it for a year. Um, there are Ansible roles for installing InfluxDB. However, they don't support configuring databases or users or retention policies. Um, Ansible itself contains several, modi several modules you can use to write your own roles, but there's nothing generic available. Um, at Use Galaxy Europe, they wrote their own role for setting up the Influx database, but it's not really reusable to be used here. And so if you plan to in automate your entire setup, 
This tutorial will provide you inspiration of, of how to do various things. Unfortunately, though, it, it's not a one-stop shop for setting up monitoring for your particular setup. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do today is we're going to set up Influx database on our Galaxy server. So it's just a little database program that will run in the background and we'll be sending data to it. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is download the Ansible role for Influx TV. And the way we do that is the same way we've been doing it all week. We add the Ansible role to our requirements and then install it. So let's do that. Firstly, I need to log into my machine. So I'll SSH to my machine name, which is cat5. And I'll give it my password. Okay, now, as you can see, I'm logged in. I'll go to the Galaxy folder, which is where we have all of our Ansible files that we've been working on all week. Hopefully, everyone doing this has also seen all of these things. If not, um, I suggest you go back and do all the requirement tutorials. Okay, so our tutorial says the first thing I need to do is add this to our requirements.yaml file. So I'll do that now. And add that influx DB, save it. Then I will um, use Ansible Galaxy to install that, that module to my uh, roles directory. Hopefully you've been doing this a few times during the week. All right, so now we check to see if that's there. And yep, you can see here we have use Galaxy EU influx DB. Okay, we'll go back to Galaxy again and I'll clear the screen. Okay, now because you don't necessarily want to put this influx DB on our Galaxy server um, in, a, in a production setup, you probably have another another virtual machine or another machine sitting around somewhere just running Grafana and InfluxDB for us. And then we, we'd get everything to send data to that. Um, but however, in this case, because we're doing training, we only have one machine available to us. And so we'll be setting up um, InfluxDB and Grafana on our Galaxy server, but we still want to create a new playbook for it anyway. So we're going to create a new playbook called monitoring.yaml. So I am monitoring. Yeah, well, and obviously, if you don't want to use Vim as your editor and you want to use Nano or Emacs or whatever you'd like to use, feel free to use it. I'm comfortable in Vim, so I'll be using it. All right. And posts um, monitoring. Um, um, true, and then roles, is use galaxy underscore eu dot influx db. Okay, so this is our playbook for the monitoring, and you can see we're going to work on host monitoring, but at the moment we don't have any of those hosts in our um, host file, but we will add them soon. Um, become true just means that if we need to, um, Ubuntu can do sudo commands. So we can um, install things like app packages, etc. And then the role that we want to run here is use Galaxy EU influx DB, which is the one we just downloaded. Okay, so we'll save that. Now we need to add the monitoring group to our host file. So if we have a look at our host file at the moment, you can see here that we have Galaxy servers and we have our Galaxy server listed here, and then we have Ansible connection equals local. Now that's great, but as I said before, we may not want to run this playbook on our Galaxy server. We may want to run it on a different server. And so we're going to create another group in our host file. In this case, we're just going to be adding the same machine under that. In the future, if you had another machine available that you wanted to run Influx and Grafana on, um, you could just change the name underneath it. Well, so we'll do that now. In hosts. 
Okay, so we're going to add a group for monitoring. And we're going to give it the um, full full name of our machine, like the one up above, Ansible. Connection is local. So we're not, it's running on a local machine, so that's fine. That's all we need to do. All right. Okay. But that's good enough for now. Now, the next thing we need to do is run this playbook. So we will. Ansible playbook monitoring. And because we, we need to specify the user, we'll put minus u Ubuntu. All right, as you can see, it created a user and a group for Influx. It, um, in, it's installed the uh, repository into our repository, our apt repositories list. And now it's installing the DB package out of apt and something failed. All right, let's have a look and see what that was. No, ignore the error. Oh, it didn't install the Influx DB client. Okay. Um, so basically what's happened is we've set up a, I'm not sure what that error was. Um, it's set up an influx DB server and this DB server is listening on port 8086. Um, it's currently unauthenticated, but it's only listening on localhost. So we don't really care. But so if we uh, sent anything to localhost 8086, that would be sent to the influx DB. Okay. We can access the influx DB service just by typing influx, influx, and we can say show databases um, is an internal database. We can say use internal, and um, we can say show measurements. And you can see here. There are a bunch of measurements. All right. Um, but basically, InfluxDB is um, installed and running and listening for us on localhost 8086. And anything that we send to it in its correct format will be stored. And then we can then query it using SQL uh, later on to pull data out of it. Okay, so let's quit and get out of that. Okay, and clear the screen. Right, the next thing we need to do is install and set up Grafana. And Grafana is going to be our visual interface to all of our metrics. It's going to be the um, web application that we use to look at all of our stuff. When we create a visualization in Grafana, we create a thing called a dashboard. And dashboards can each have multiple graphs on them, etc. A lot of the use Galaxy Star servers, so um, Galaxy Main in the US, Galaxy Australia, which is the one I administer, and um, Galaxy in Europe, we've already created a whole lot of data dashboards that you can just download and copy and then use them on your own server with a bit of uh, modification. There are some really nice examples of the dashboards that we're talking about from public galaxies, and you can have a look at them. Um, because I built the usegalaxy.org.au ones, I'm going to click on this. It's actually, the URL for this is stats.genome.edu.au, but I'll click on this link and show you some of these. As you can see, the first one that comes up is a summary of our users, etc. You can see how many jobs we've run, how many users we have, um, how many data sets we're holding on to, etc. And then if you go up to here at the top and click on the top, you can see here we have a lot more. If you click on this one, it says Galaxy Detail. You can then see a lot of detail about my Galaxy server. It tells me pretty much everything I need to know, including where things might be slow in my web server. And so um, I can see if there's problems just by looking at this. Another, another good thing is if I go to pausey loads, I can see the load on all of the machines in my cluster. 
I can see um, all of my network, I can see the disk use, I can see the slurm states, I can see how long they've been up for, etc. So yeah, a lot of things you can do with Grafana. All right, so I'll go back to Galaxy Monitoring with Telegraph here. Um, and use Galaxy EU has a very similar page to that. And because I'm in Australia, that sometimes it takes a bit of time to load. But basically here's um, Galaxy Europe's summary page. You can see what their load's like, how many jobs they're running, how many active users they've had in the last 10 minutes, etc., and a whole lot of other things. And this is really good for looking at our Galaxy servers and understand how, how they're being used. Okay. So to install Grafana onto our Galaxy server, we once again edit our requirements.yaml and we add in another, yet another Ansible role. And this one's by a mob called Cloud Alchemy and Grafana. So we're gonna copy that and we're going to add it to our requirements.yaml. Save, and then we're going to run, where are we? Ansible Galaxy install again. It's like we uh, have done a lot of times this week. And that will then install Grafana, the Ansible Grafana role into our roles directory. We'll check to make sure it's there. There it is at the top. So yep, it's been installed, fantastic. Go back to the Galaxy and I'll clear the screen. All right. Um, now we need to add this to our monitoring playbook. Not the Galaxy playbook, the monitoring playbook. So let's do that. Uh, how can we... Uh, Okay, close that. Now, Grafana, the Ansible role for Grafana needs a few variables to be set. So some of the variables it needs to have set are what URL are we going to be um, operating from? So where is Grafana gonna be located? And in our case, it's gonna be located um, at our inventory host name Grafana. We also need to set some security things like um, a username and a password, and we're not going to use password as the password, we're going to change it. And um, then we need to um, add a data source. And I'll explain to you what that means in a minute. But the first thing we need to do is we need to create a new file called group vars monitoring.yaml and copy all of this stuff into it. All right, so let's copy that. Make a new file, group vars monitoring.yaml and then we'll paste in our things. All right, so inventory hostname Grafana. Now our inventory hostname comes out of our host file and that will be the long form or the fully qualified domain name of the machine that I'm currently running on, which is gat 5oz blah, blah, blah. Um, Grafana security, we don't want to use password as the password. I'm going to change that to something that I remember, like I like beer. It's not a very good password, but hey, at least it's not password. Okay, um, we're going to set up a, a data source for Grafana, and that means that this is basically um, so that Grafana knows where to go and get data from. We're going to call our data source Galaxy and it's of type InfluxDB. So we're telling Grafana to go to InfluxDB to get all of its um, data from. And it's a, it's a proxy connection. Um, the URL is the local host at port 8086, and it uses HTTP to access it. So Influx runs a, um, runs a, a REST API and uh, Grafana uses that REST API to access it. Um, this, we wanna set this to be the default data source. Um, set a version, um, you know, we don't want to be playing around with, we don't want to make it editable. And the database that we want to get to is one we haven't created yet, but we're going to call it Telegraph. 
So we're going to create a data later on in this tutorial, we'll be creating a, a, a database inside Influx called Telegraph. And that's the one we want to point to. Okay, so let's save that. And now what we're going to do is run the monitoring playbook again. So Ansible playbook, and monitoring, and then once again, we'll set the Ubuntu user. I don't know why that has an error, but never mind. All right, we're up to installing Grafana. And it started. So we've seen, down here we've started Grafana. So it's a web application that's running. Um, that's well and good. Um, we have a web server running on this machine. It's called Nginx. And now what we need to do is tell Nginx about our new web app called Grafana, and then we need to be able to point to it. So we need to update the Nginx configuration in our templates. All right, so let's do that. Let's see the screen again. So we need to edit templates, um, Nginx galaxy.j2, and then at the end of it, we need to add a new location. It's nginx galaxy.j2. And here is our thing. We here we have our, our server. We have our root location, which will be which will point to galaxy. Um, some static locations, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. We'll go all the way to the bottom, just above the last curly brace, and we'll add in another location. Ugh. I've got to learn how to type. Grafana. Now it's important you put the slash Grafana slash there. Open curly braces. Um, then we'll do proxy pass and then the web address that we need to go to, which will be HTTP uh, 127.0.0.1, which is localhost. And the web app is accessible on the port 3000. Um, slash and then semicolon. Don't forget the semicolon. It breaks things. And then close the curly braces. All right. And done. Um, now we need to um, rerun the Galaxy playbook because that will restart Nginx for us and update Nginx. Okay, because we've just edited the uh, Nginx template and if you remember from the installing galaxy ansible hopefully that was a couple of days ago now um you'll remember that uh to when we do an update to nginx we need to run the galaxy playbook for that to happen so let's do that now and once again as you you want to right running the galaxy playbook and what this is going to do is just basically rewrite the Nginx config and restart Nginx for us. I mean, we could have done it manually, but that's not the point of using Ansible in the first place. The whole idea of using Ansible is that we never do anything manually on our machine again. And that way, um, by using the Ansible code to do everything for us, we have a record of everything we've done. And it's really, this is really good when you combine the Ansible scripts with GitHub or a Git repository, because it means that you've got, and then got version control of your Ansible scripts. And you've also got a record of everything you've done and all the changes that you've made. And this is really important if you're in a production environment. All right, so just uh, set the V hosts and reloaded Nginx. Okay. So now if we go to my Galaxy server, which is here, 
then I'll copy this URL onto a new tab. And at the end of it, I'm going to put Grafana and then slash. Here we go. Loading Grafana. Okay. So we need to log in. So we can just type in admin, which is the username. And my password is I like beer, because I do. And I log in. Okay, and this is the home page for no, please don't add that to last pass. Here is my um, Grafana web page. Okay, well that's pretty cool. Let's go back to our tutorial. What does it say to do? Okay, so the web application is running, but there's no data available to it. We'll get back to it shortly and we'll configure dashboards once we start sending data into our InfluxDB. So now we're going to install Telegraph onto our machine. Um, normally in a, in a production setup, we'd install Telegraph on all of our machines and uh, configure it so that it sent data to our central collecting central collection point. Um, today, we're only going to install on our one machine and we're going to tell it to send data to itself or to send data to InfluxDB, which is uh, running on this machine as well. Um, Telegraph has a lot of documentation how to configure all different types of input inputs. It can, um, it can support a large array of different inputs, um, things like it'll monitor a Postgres database for you. It can monitor MySQL. It can monitor um, just hardware settings. It can monitor temperatures. It can monitor all sorts of things. But you can also um, write queries or you can write a program like, like a bash script or something and have Telegraph execute it regularly, just like a cron job. And then whatever data Telegraph collects from that uh, executable, um, it will then send it off to InfluxDB. Um, it puts it into a, a line protocol format. And this looks like, like this box here. Um, each, each measurement has a, a name attached to the measurement. And then uh, it has some key value pairs. And in this case, our key value pairs are country Germany, city Freiburg, temperature 25 and wind zero. And then the last section here is the timestamp. And in, if you recall me talking before about InfluxDB, that it was a time series database, um, this is really important. Okay. And you can see here that the temperature in State College was 33. That must be Fahrenheit because I don't think it ever gets that hot in State College. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so you can get all sorts of different data. This one here is um, the disk data. So you can see here that we have uh, VDA2, it's an XFS, it's on the, uh, the host name, uh, what, mode it's, what mode it's in, uh, how, how much space it has free in inodes, um, et cetera. And then a lot of data can be sent in. And then once again, we have that timestamp at the end, which is really important. Um, GX admin, which hopefully you've seen before. If you haven't, don't worry, we'll talk about that shortly. Um, a GX admin has a special type of query called an I query that when you run will um, produce an InfluxDB formatted output, which is really nice. Okay, but what we need to do first is we need to configure Telegraph. So Telegraph is going to be our little um, daemon that runs on our machine and records lots of different metrics from our machine and sends them off to InfluxDB. And we're going to use Ansible to do that, just like we have with everything else we've done this week. And so we're going to, first thing we're going to in, do is install the um, Ansible role from DJ Wasabi called Telegraph, and the version is uh, 0.12. So once again, copy that. We're going to edit our requirements. YAML, and we'll add this into the end. Okay, close this. And as per normal, we will install it using the Ansible Galaxy install command. And it's done. So we'll check to make sure it's in there. You don't really have to do this, but I like to each time. 
So DJ Wasabi Telegraph, very good, it's downloaded it. All right. So now we need to do a little bit of setup. And this setup, because normally we would install Telegraph onto all of the machines that we have, it's a good idea to put any of the Telegraph settings into group vars all.yaml. Well, a certain Telegraph uh, things. The things that you, you want to monitor common to each machine, like basically the machine statistics, like the CPU usage and the disk usage and how many processors are running and how much memory is being used, all those kind of things are common to pretty much every machine that you have. And so um, it's a good idea to put this kind of setup information into the group vars all.yaml. And that way, when you install Telegraph on your machines, it will end up on all of them. All right, so we're going to edit groupvars.all and we're going to add this to the end of it. So we'll copy that. Now, I've, as you can see, I've already done the CVMFS tutorial, and so I already have something in my old YAML. But I'll just go down here and paste this in. Okay. So some of the things we've just said to do are, um, we want to download and install the latest version of Telegraph. This one says here, where do we want to send our output from Telegraph? So we're gonna, we want it to be of type InfluxDB because that's where we're sending it. And the URL that we want to send it to is actually an array, but the first thing in our array is the local host at port 8086. And if you recall before, that's where our InfluxDB is listening. And we want to set it to, we want to send all this data to the database called Telegraph. Okay, and then these are the input plugins that we want. So um, by default, we want to install uh, the CPU plugin, the disk plugin, the kernel, processors, IO, memory, system, swap, net, and netstat. Uh, CPU obviously monitors how much CPU is being used. Um, disk monitors how much disk is being used. Uh, kernel is monitors all the different kernel processors, etc. Uh, IO is a good one. It tells you how fast your disks are running. Memory is another good one because it tells you how much memory you're using, uh, if you're using swap or not, and then net stats and net can uh, monitor your um, internet traffic or your network traffic for you, which is really good. Okay, so and now that's done. We're going to close that, go back to our tutorial. You can see here it explains why we're putting it into the old YAML file, which I've talked about before. Um, however, because this one here is a Galaxy server, we also want to add some Telegraph um, configuration to our Galaxy server's YAML file. And we want to call this one Telegraph Plugins Extra. If you have a look up here, we said Telegraph Plugins Default in our all.yaml because all of our machines are going to get these plugins. But then for this particular machine, our Galaxy server, we want to have Telegraph Plugins Extra. And because we're putting it into our Galaxy servers.yaml file, when we run the playbook, only the Galaxy servers group will pick up these extra settings. Okay, so we'll copy this and we'll add it to our group vars galaxy servers.yaml. And we're going to go all the way to the bottom. And we'll call these telegraph settings. And we'll paste that in there. Okay, so what we're basically doing is we're saying um, there's some extra Galaxy things that we want to listen to. We want to use the plugin Stats D. Now, Galaxy is pretty cool. Um, if we ask Galaxy to start collecting um, stats, it will then uh, run a little Stats D daemon and um, uh, will make all sorts of Galaxy metrics available at. Um, the stats D local host at port 8125. Um, and we're going to use a metric separator of dot. And um, we're going to allow out to pull in 10,000 messages at once, which is pretty cool. All right. So uh, we just do this. And this, this allows us to monitor everything that's going on inside Galaxy. All right. All right. So one last thing we need to do um, is we need to tell Galaxy that it needs to start collecting the stats D stuff for us, this stats D stuff. And so the way we do that is we just say in our Galaxy config, we just say that um, stats D host is localhost and that we want 
um, all of our stats, D, our stats D to be formatted as influx DB. So we just need to add these two lines into our um, Galaxy configuration at the top of our Galaxy servers group glass file. And this will um, allow Galaxy to start collecting stuff uh, from StatsD, send it to local host in the InfluxDB format, which then Telegraph can then find and use. All right. So let's grab that. Copy. We just need to go to the top of this file up in our Galaxy settings, which is up here. And add it to here. Okay, so we've added two things, StatsD host, local host, StatsD influx DB. All right, close that. And now the last thing we need to do is add Telegraph to our to the roles in our Galaxy playbook. So we'll do that, VIM galaxy.yaml and the last one here, we will add DJ Wasabi Telegraph. DJ dash Wasabi dot Telegraph. Okay, and we'll save that. Okay, so now now that we've added the um, role to the playbook, all we need to do now is run the playbook. And this will install and configure Telegraph for us. You'll notice here it's pausing a little bit here. Uh, in conditional pausing, sorry, it installed a conditional dependency. You see there was a bit of yellow flash past and that was it installing the StatsD software. It needs to restart Galaxy for us. Okay, we're installing Telegraph. And it's completed. Okay, you see here we uh, copied the extra plugins, which is important. So that means we can uh, listen to the Galaxy routes and restart Telegraph and everything should be good. Okay, so now if we do um, influx TV or an influx on our command line, and then show databases. You can see there's a new database here now called Telegraph. And if we say use Telegraph and then show measurements, you can see here that now we are measuring CPU, disk, disk IO, a whole lot of Galaxy stuff, kernel, mem, etc. And if we say show series, you can see here that we are collecting a lot of data from the CPU about my machine. Um, we're collecting all sorts of things, which is pretty cool. Except that my host name is a bit broken. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to um, start monitoring um, our machine with Grafana. And that the best thing we're going to do is kind of look at all of the detail of our node. And we're going to borrow or steal a dashboard from Galaxy EU's page. All right, so that's the easiest way we can do it. So we're going to go to import a dashboard. So we'll go to use Galaxy EU's node detail dashboard. Here it is here. And it says what we need to do is look for the sharing icon at the top and click it. And then under the export tab, click save to file. All right, so I'm going to go to here. I'm going to click share dashboard. I'm going to click export. 
and then save to file. And you can see I've just downloaded a file. It's going to my downloads. Okay, next thing I need to do is in my own Grafana server on the home page, hover over the plus icon and use the import from the menu. Okay, so here's my Grafana server. I'll go to the plus and I'll go import. And then it says, um, click upload.json file from the, the one we just downloaded. All right, so upload JSON file, go to my downloads. Here it is there and add that. And we'll import it. And here it is here. And as you can see, we are already, it's already picked the right host. Unfortunately, this is a weird host name. It probably needs to be changed in my hosts file, but never mind. And then you can see here that we have, it's already looking at the load on the machine. It's doing the um, load, the average load per minute, the average load per five minutes and the average load per 15 minutes. It's not collecting any CPU data. Um, it's using some disk usage and some process states and showing us some memory, how long it's been up for, etc. I might just zoom out a little bit so it makes it a little bit less. Um, you can see how many context switches the machine's doing, the interrupts, all sorts of extra things that we may want to look at, how many IOPs are currently in pros, pros, progress, etc. All right. Okay, let's go back to here. So um, now that we've done that, our first dashboard is live. Um, it's kind of like HTOP on all of our systems. And if we had more than one machine that we've installed things onto, we could just click on this uh, host up the top here, click on that and then say actually change to a different host and show me the detail of a different host. But we've only got one, so that's fine. And we've been collecting data for about what a little bit now. It's uh, showing three hours up here. If we change that to last five minutes, you can see here we've been collecting data for about five minutes now. Cool. And you can see the current disk usage, etc. So yeah, lots of in interesting information on this page. Switch it back to three hours. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to actually set up a dashboard and we're going to try and figure out how to get Grafana to display something for us. So to create a dashboard, we need to click on the plus icon on the, in Grafana and then we're going to click add query and we're going to do a whole bunch of things. So let's follow this part of the tutorial along. Um, just to make it a bit easier, I'm going to drag this into a different window so we can have them both open at the same time. Okay, so this is my Grafana. I'm gonna add a new dashboard. And then we have an empty dashboard. It's called new dashboard. It says click add query, but I'm gonna add a new panel because it's the same thing. This is a little bit different than what you might think, but now basically here we have that set up. You can see down there. And this is the query builder interface. Now, what we need to do is let's build a query. So from the default, um, we're going to select measurement. We'll click on here and we'll set that to galaxy. And then in our field value, let's change that to field mean. And then down here, we're going to group it by fill null, we'll change it to fill none, and we'll add new. So we'll click on the plus and we'll say tag path. And then we will alias by tag path. Now at the top of the page, it says last six hours. Let's click this to say last 30 minutes. So last 30 minutes. And then we will um, save this dashboard. 
by clicking save at the top. And we're going to give it a name and we're going to call it Galaxy. That'll do, just call it Galaxy. Okay. So now you can see here, we're collecting a bit of data. This is actually internal Galaxy job handlers monitor step. So we haven't actually done anything on our Galaxy server for it to record anything, but let's track to see how long it takes the interface to respond. Let's just move around Galaxy on our Galaxy server. I'll load analyze data again. Um, I'll look at my file, I'll download it. And hopefully this will start appearing in here. I'll click on refresh the dashboard. You'll notice that now we have a new thing and it says web root index. So basically what we did then was we loaded the page and it took 48 milliseconds, which is, that's pretty quick. Okay. All right, so um, this little graph here is just measuring how long it takes for all of our Galaxy server to do things. I'm actually going to set this up so that it will um, automatically, every five seconds it will update. I'll change it to 10 seconds. Every 10 seconds this is going to update now by itself. And if we hover over it, we can see that um, how long bits and pieces of the Galaxy interface are taking to respond to our requests. And this is really, really handy data to have if you're trying to figure out what's wrong with your production machine. Okay, going back to the tutorial, we're going to add a second query to an existing graph. We're going to change the title. So we click on panel title and we go to edit. And we can change the panel title by clicking in this box here by saying um, Galaxy UI. That'll do. That's probably a good title for it. Um, Next thing we want to do is we want to add another query. Okay, so to do that, we go down here and we click on plus query. Right now we want to select measurement galaxy again. Um, field value is field mean. Field mean. Um, we want to change the field null to field none. And we want to alias by percentile. Oh, I'm sorry, we also want to add a new selector. So I'll select, we want to add um, selectors percentile here. All right, escape out of that. So we hit save first, save it, and escape. Um, you can see, oh, I can make it bigger by the way, by just clicking and dragging on it, making it bigger. So that's pretty easy to do. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to style the graph a little bit. So we're going to go um, and we're going to make this 95th percentile line um, stand out a bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a series over override. So we go back to here and we click edit. And then down here where it says series overrides, we can say add series override. All right, so the uh, alias that we want to do is percentile. So that's all we want. And um, then uh, we want to click the plus button after that. And we say we want to change the color down here and change. And we want to choose a color. Um, I kind of like purple. Let's do dark purple. All right, and then we click the plus again and change the line width, uh, line width, and we'll change that to five. So it's nice and thick. As you can see here now, it's nice and thick on our line. It's really standing out from the rest of our graph. All right, now in the next section down, we can edit the axes because we don't have any time, you know, units on it at the moment. This says unit short. Well, let's change it to a unit um, time, which is down the bottom usually. Time, and we want milliseconds. Um, so now here you can see that 
we can actually know how long these things are taking to respond. And so our galaxy server is running pretty fast. And 95th percentile of all of our things are taking less than 80 milliseconds to um, occur, which is really cool. All right. Um, you can change the scale, you can change it to linear, you can change the uh, decimals, you can set the y min and max here. You can even put a label on it if you want to. All right, um, now we're going to change the legend. So to do that, we uh, close the axis bit and go to the next one, which is legend. And we're going to say show yes. We want to show as a table and we want to show to the right. So now you can see we have this shown here on the right instead of all hodgepodge on the bottom. Then down here, we want to show some values. We want to show the minimum, we'll show the maximum, and we'll show the average. And so now you can see we have a table of all the different things that are occurring inside our Galaxy server and their minimum times, their maximum times, and their average times. And this is really good troubleshooting for when things go wrong in your Galaxy server. Oh, sorry, this is the old version. Um, we just go back up to here to panel and we, um, the panel titles, Galaxy UI, but Galaxy request times, Galaxy UI request times, fine. All right, so we'll save that dashboard and then we'll hit escape. And we're back under our, you can see our dashboard here. And so now we have, I'll just resize it a bit. Now we have our graph showing us all of our um, time series, um, uh, web UI things that are going on inside Galaxy. And then here we have a table of everything that's occurred that's currently being displayed. And we can see the minimum amount of time, the maximum amount of time and the average. There we go. All new bits of information showed up and all the times that it took for all of those things to happen. Okay, going back to here again. All right, enough of that. Let's get on to monitoring. Now, monitoring is where we can get Grafana to let us know when things have gone bad. So we're going to add an alert to our graph. So we're going to um, edit this. We're back in our edit thing. Um, and then on the left hand side, select the alert icon. So down here, select alert. And then we're going to click create alert. All right. So alerts consist of a rule, usually with a name evaluated every n seconds for a period of time. The four can be an important parameter, which you can read more about in the lots of documentation. But and then we add some conditions. Um, we say when we want this alert to activate. Uh, so we say average B is, um, is for, for averaged over a minute, um, goes above 50 milliseconds, then there may be something's going on and then we'll configure a notification. Right, so let's do that. So uh, we're going to evaluate every every minute, um, five minutes or so. Uh, we want to when the average. Yeah, so we want to um, uh, make this one minute. So we want it to be on query B, and then we will say when this gets to above fifty. So the conditions are average of query B. Um, is about 50, then we want to do something. All right, um, we are gonna configure a notification channel in the tutorial. However, uh, what we can do is uh, we could send a notification to something like um, a Slack channel, send it to GitHub, or we could send it send it an email, or we could make it do whatever. Um, we're not gonna set that up in this tutorial. It's a little bit involved and complicated, but there's a lot of documentation that it explains it for you. Okay, um, there's lots of different services you can use. So we're just gonna save this dashboard for now. Save and um, we'll escape. All right, so now you can see here there's a red line. And um, if this purple line goes above the red line and stays there um, for a minute, then um, it will send an alert out. Okay, final part of this tutorial. We're going to talk about how we can use um, GX Admin and Telegraph together to collect information from our uh, Galaxy database and 
and then send it into Telegraph. And then therefore send it into Influx and then put it into Grafana. Okay, so um, we need to install GX Admin if you haven't already done it. Uh, if you've already done this section, if you've done the GX Admin bit, then feel free to skip this. But um, I haven't done it on mine, so I'm going to edit the requirements.yaml and add in use Galaxy EU GX Admin. So I'll go back to my terminal. I'll go VIM requirements. And then I'll add in this. Save it and then install it like we would have done with everything else. And then add the role to our Galaxy YAML. Use galaxy underscore eu dot gx admin. Save that and then run the playbook. Okay, and there's GX had been installed. And we can test it by becoming a Galaxy user and running GX admin. And we'll try GX admin query. Uh, let's do monthly jobs. And look, we've run a job. Fantastic. Okay, so GX admin's working. Go back to the Ubuntu user and clear the screen. Okay, so GX admin's installed and working. Now what we need to do is um, configure Telegraph for GX admin. Now to do that, we need to give Telegraph some permission to uh, run one um, GX admin, but also so that it can uh, talk to the Postgres database. All right, so we need to add um, telegraph and password null into uh, our Postgres object users. And we also need to add um, uh, privileges for the telegraph user to the Galaxy database. But we don't want to let it modify things. We only want it to like, let it select stuff or view stuff. So we'll do that. To do that, we're going to um, edit our group vars Galaxy servers. And if we go all the way to the top of this file, Oops, that's not the top. What's it doing? Ah, here we go. All the way to the top. Here we have our PostgreSQL objects users. And so we will add a new one to this. Name, Telegraph. And we will add a password no, so they don't need a password to log in. Okay, and then underneath all of this, we're going to add a new section called PostgreSQL object privileges. And I'm just going to cut and paste this. Cut and paste. Okay. Now we need to um, also configure Telegraph to run GX admin. So under our Telegraph plugins extra, we need to add some more stuff. So we want to be able, we want it to be able to look at the Galaxy queue, for example. 
to see how many jobs are sitting in our queue. And so we're going to add this section here to underneath our, our Telegraph plugins extra. So let's copy that. And we'll go all the way to the bottom of this file down to our Telegraph. Here's our Telegraph plugins extra. Oops. And we'll paste that there. So now basically we've got a, a new plugin that's called uh, Monitor Galaxy Q. Um, it's an exec type plugin, which means it's an executable that we want to run. The commands that we want to run, and we need to set um, uh, a, an environment variable for PG database is Galaxy. And then we want to say, all right, for run user bin GX admin, we want to run an I query because we want the data that's coming out of GX admin to be formatted for InfluxDB. And the query we want to look at is the Q overview, and we only want the short tool ID instead of having the full tool ID. We want to run this um, every 15 seconds. We'll give it a timeout of 10 seconds. So if it doesn't run for 10 seconds, then it'll just time out. And the output data format is influx. Okay, so we'll save all of that. And then we'll run the playbook. So Galaxy, one, two. So now we're, um, I'm not sure if you saw, but it just flashed past in yellow that we've added a Postgres user and gave it some permissions. And then soon we'll be um, adding the plugin to Telegraph. You can see there we've configured the extra plugins and uh, we've restarted Telegraph and it's done. Okay. Now we're going to build a new graph in Grafana and this will um, display our current queue. Okay. So we go back to our Grafana interface, which is on here. And we're going to add a new graph to this this same I might just make this one a bit smaller so it's not taking out so much real estate there we go okay just before we move on um, there's actually an error in this um, telegraph plugins extra um, this needs to be user local bin gx admin and so we're going to go back to our uh, galaxy servers yaml file change that to use a local bin GX admin and then rerun the playbook. So it's located here. We're going to change this to use a local bin GX admin and then we'll quit out of that. And then we will run our Ansible playbook again. We're almost up to Telegraph, here we go. And we've made a change, restarted Telegraph. All right, we just might check to see if Telegraph is run properly. 
And to do that, we'll just do pseudo system CTL status telegraph. And it's working fine. All right, very good. Okay, so now we'll go back to our Grafana server here. And now we're going to add a new panel or a new graph to our current dashboard. And to do that, we click on this little plus add panel button up the top here. Click that and we say add new panel. Okay. Now we're back on our um, edit our panel thing again. We're going to go down here where it says um, select measurement. We're going to change that to Q. UE, UE dash overview. Okay. Count. And we're going to aggregate it over some. Some. Okay, and we're going to group it by time interval. We're going to change that to time 15 seconds. And we'll change the field to none. Okay, so we've added the time. We'll now add a tag of tool ID and another tag of tool version. So we go here and we say tag tool underscore ID. And then we add another one tag tool underscore version. And we go to here. And we are in alias by, and we go tag tool underscore ID slash tag tool underscore version. We're putting them inside square brackets, um, each tag inside square brackets, so we know what it is. All right, and as you can see, we've got no data showing up here, and that's because we haven't run any jobs in our Galaxy server for a while, and so. In the future now, if we run a job, if they don't finish within 15 seconds, um, we, they should appear on this panel. At the moment though, we obviously don't have any. Um, so on the visualization on, on the, over here, on these settings where it says visualization, um, our display in fact, um, draw bars is no, lines yes, points no, here our mode is we want to have staircase or so we'll switch staircase on and then we'll stacking and null values um, we'll stack yes null value as zero null is zero and then we'll go down here and say um, under the legend section show as table to the right and we'll show um, max average and current. And then hide series um, with only nulls or with only zeros. Okay, and then um, back up the top up here, we'll change the panel title to be Galaxy Q over Q. This uh, tutorial needs to be updated for this new version of Grafana, which only came out like a week ago. Right, so it's done. And you can see here we have our Galaxy Q overview. We'll make it the full width. Um, there's nothing here because we haven't run any jobs. So if we go back to our, our Galaxy server here and start running some jobs, we should, they should start showing up in this Q overview here. So let's, uh, I have a, I've got BWA installed. So I might grab some data from Zenodo. If you, um... Okay, so I'm gonna import some data. I'll just grab a couple of fast day files. So I'll paste fetch data. Um, I'll grab that from there. I'll then copy that and paste it and grab R2. So this is just a tiny little um, data set out of Zenodo. Um, if you want to go looking for it, this is the 
um, uh, hands-on data from the uh, microbial variant calling tutorial. But basically, I'll set these to last Q Singer and click start. Now, hopefully, this will take a little while to run, and they won't finish in 10 seconds or 15 seconds. And so uh, it may appear here for us. Yep, you can see here we had an upload happen, and as you can see here, we had one running. Network. So there you go. All right, so now we're going to uh, uh, do a mapping. So I'll go to mapping, map with BWA mem. I'll map it against um, e, e. coli, even though they're not E. coli, it doesn't really matter. And I'll run that. So we have another job here. It runs. Gone to slurm. Here it goes. Now, any minute now, our Galaxy will pick it up. You can see here it says, oh, look, you're running BWA mem. Yeah, cool. So that's shown up as well. We have one of them running. And uh, we can see here we had some some times appear. And you can see here that one of them took five seconds. I wonder what that one was. Let's have a look. Which is this column. It should be one that says five seconds. Oh, yeah, there it is. Uh, so the slurm job runner took five seconds to queue the job for us. So there you go. You get some inf interesting information from these things. Okay. So you can see here we've run some jobs and um, yeah, we've seen them appear and disappear again. We have done a lot of work in this tutorial. We installed Telegraph, InfluxDB and Grafana onto our Galaxy server. We've configured Grafana to monitor our Galaxy for us. Um, we've configured Grafana to monitor our, our machine. We've configured it to look and monitor our queue as well. So we can see when jobs are, are appearing in our queue. Um, some of the key points to take away from this are that uh, Telegraph is really cool and you should probably install on all of your servers. Um, Galaxy can set its own internal metrics to Telegraph. Um, Telegraph can run arbitrary commands like GX admin. Um, InfluxDB can collect all the metrics from Telegraph from all of your machines. And then we can use Grafana to visualize all of these metrics and monitor their values. And that is the end of this tutorial. Uh, if you could though, please, could you fill in the feedback form for this tutorial, just so that we know if you enjoyed it, uh, if it was useful, or if there were any problems, could you please let us know here? Great, thank you very much and goodbye.